In today's video I'll be painting one of the big Stompy Tom Max, the XV95 Ghost Kill Battlesuit. Hey guys, I'm Zoltan and you're watching Phalanx Miniatures. For a good couple of years I've had a whole Tau army sitting in my display case, built, primed and ready to be painted. I have loved Tau since I played them in the original Dawn of War, but somehow I never got around to painting them. So while I was waiting for the new Tau Codex and the crude army box to arrive, I decided to finally put some colors on my first proper Tau model. And if I do this, I might as well go big or go home, so I went with one of the big mags, but decided to go with the second biggest one I have and leave the Riptide for the next one. So if you want to see how I painted the orange armor, used what I call the poor man's masking putty to do the white head, learn all my tricks about edge highlighting a big model like this, then paint some lenses to recover from all those edges, add some cool glow effects to the weapons, and finally create a strange alien base that any blue fish person would feel at home on, then let's start painting. I started from a zenithal prime since it will immediately give us a nice color transition on the big panels, some organic shading on the whole model and it will allow our paints to achieve full color and vibrancy over the white parts. If you want to learn more about zenithal priming I have a video on the channel dedicated to this topic. The ghost kill is a big boy and while it's technically possible to paint it purely by brush, for any big model like this, whether it's a battlesuit, imperial knight or tank, the airbrush is our friend, at least for applying the base coat and the highlights on the armor, but it has its drawbacks as well and we will talk about and deal with those soon. The first actual color I sprayed on the model is violet and I covered the whole model in this, which due to the zenithal results in some brighter shades of violet on the parts of the model facing up and some very dark violet shadows in all the recesses and downward facing parts of the model. And if you're asking yourself, but Zoltan, why are you spraying this thing violet? I saw an orange towel on the thumbnail. Well, there are two reasons for that. One, violet is a great shadow color for orange and it will make our model look much more interesting and vibrant. And two, I had a very specific environment for this guy in mind and this is my way of fitting him onto his base. Okay, now we have a nice violet colored towel with some obvious highlights already visible on him. Next, I will load some red into the airbrush and start spraying all the armor panels from above in a way that I still want to keep some of the violet shades on the panels in the shadows. I imagine that the airbrush is my light source and spray everything mostly from above and from the right, but keeping in mind that this color will still technically be part of my shadows as well as the midtones, so I have to go further than just spraying it into the highlights. But still, anything that is completely facing down on the left side of the model will remain mostly just violet. I'm using an airbrush paint here, so I mixed in very little thinner, but if you are using something that is not pre-thinned like this one, you will need to add at least 50% thinner as well. And giving advice on thinning is difficult since it depends on your needle size, the pressure you are using and the paint itself. But the general idea is to go with the same consistency and settings you would use for base coating since we want coverage here. Now it is time to switch to an orangish color and work on our midtones and highlights. I use Vallejo Scarlet thin to a base coat consistency and spray it only in the highlight areas, letting it overspray into the midtones as well. With this color I am really concentrating on spraying from above and from the right. Some parts of the armor like the left leg for example will barely get any of this color. The final paint I will be using is a pure orange and I do the same as before but now I will really restrict where I spray this only on the armor panels that would be fully in the light. So anything facing up and to the right. This needs multiple coats since I really want to bring out the orange color here so it shines compared to the reddish and violet tones around it. Finally, I decided that I lost too much violet in the shadows, so I went in and reinforced it a bit from below. But this is only needed because I wanted to put the model in a specific environment, as you will see when I do the base later. If your Tau don't fight on a purple-violet alien world, you can skip this step. And that's it, that's our armor finished, and it looks quite good for something that took me like 30 minutes to do. But it will change quite a bit later as I paint in all the colors around it and paint all the edges. But now let's talk about the head for a second. You might have noticed that I didn't spray the head and that is because I wanted it to be white instead of orange. And I thought I would paint that by brush later but the problem with that is that it would look kind of weird since it would lack the shading of the rest of the body and it would have a very different texture from the rest of the mole. So I decided to spray it white at this point so obviously now I had to paint it violet first. And if you ask yourself why the answer is because I wanted it to have the same shadow color as the rest of the body. But now I was facing the issue of spraying white in the middle of the finished orange armor and I didn't have any masking putty around. But no problem, I will be just going full MacGyver on this one and use some thin foil. It might not be as effective as proper masking putty, but it's cheap and there is always some in the kitchen. 
Once I managed to mask everything, I sprayed some warm grey over the whole head first, paying attention to leaving some small amount of violet in the shadows. Then I switched one level brighter to grimy grey and sprayed it only on the raised surfaces so that I left some of the warm grey visible. Notice that I didn't use anything close to white. I reserved white or close to white colors for the highlights. It already looks white, but with those on you would never tell that the head is actually grey and not white. But now it's time to take off our trusty tin foil and lo and behold there is almost no overspray and we have a nice white head in the middle of the orange armor. Now it was time to set the airbrush aside and block in all the other colors and this will also give us a better picture of how the armor actually looks. First of all I blocked in everything that was not meant to be orange or white with pure black. This took some time since this model is bigger than it seems. I took a nice big brush and went slowly and deliberately making sure that I don't hit any of the orange panels. Believe it or not, this is one of my favorite parts, since it's so satisfying as the black covers everything and the model becomes neater and neater as the overspray gets covered. After the black, I started covering all the other elements as well, first starting with everything that I wanted to be gold. I used one of my favorite metal colors for this, Necro Gold from Scale 75. I don't really like working with true metallic colors too much, so I wanted to restrict how much metal there is on this model. So I only covered mostly the typical Tau symbols and the various cylinders and circular little tech thingies on his armor. Then I just randomly realized that I should do something about the base as well, so I spread some dry ground texture on it. It's a good opportunity to do this whenever you want to put the model down for a while, since this stuff needs some time to dry and you don't want to accidentally get some half-cured texture on the armor while you are painting. Once that dried, I decided to block in some white segments on the orange armor, since that is a typical Tau feature on all the Tau color schemes. I used the same warm grey and grimy grey as for the head. Finally, I used some gun metal to paint some parts of the endoskeleton as well, but as I said before, I didn't want to use too much metal, so I concentrated on what I felt would be moving parts, like all the rotating bits around the joints plus some parts of the weapons too, for good measure. And with that most of the colors are on the model except the blue for the glow effect but I will take care of that later, so let's do some shading. Since I had some true metal bits I used the typical combo of null oil for the steel parts and dryland flash shade for the gold bits. There is not much subtlety to this, just slop it on like there is no tomorrow. Then it was time for the much trickier business of shading the armor panels. Since I used an airbrush, the orange color got into all the recesses and to bring back the contrast and details, now I had to do something about that. So I mixed some flow improver with pure black, took a nice pointy brush and I applied this mix in all the recesses on the model. This might look very difficult, but as I said before, this model is big, so the recesses are deep and very well defined as well. So all you need to do is to put the tip of the brush into the recess and let the groove guide it as you carefully but deliberately drag the brush through it. It is fine if you mess up the edges of the recesses a bit, since later we will cover those with edge highlights anyway, but the neater you do this, the better of course. Alternatively, you can also apply an oil wash, which would be even easier to apply, but it also has its own drawbacks that I didn't want to deal with this time. At this point, the completely unpainted and bright colored base started to bother me a bit, so I mixed some black lotus and dark violet express colors, essentially contrast paints from Vallejo, and applied them over the whole thing. Contrast is great for covering bright color texture paste, and I used these specific colors because I wanted to go for something dark with lots of violets and blues, since I thought that would look cool as a backdrop for the orange battlesuit. Before I started the highlighting process, there was one more thing I needed to do. In my experience, sprayed on colors have a tendency to reactivate and smudge if you expose them to too much moisture. If I mess up my edge highlights and want to wipe them away with a wet brush, I might also smudge my base coat. 
To avoid this, I applied a couple of coats of matte varnish over the whole model. If you are worried about the metal parts being hit by this, don't worry too much. We will highlight those later anyway, so some varnish won't hurt them. Now we reach the most important part of the process, the edge highlights. And I'm not gonna lie, this can be a bit tedious, but it will also completely transform the model, so it's also absolutely worth it. And if you're not comfortable with edge highlights, I have a dedicated video about it on the channel that should tell you everything about how to highlight this Tompy boy. I will put it into the right corner. Alright, so let's start with the orange armor first. I will use the same color I used last from the airbrush, orange from Chimera Colors. Paints are more intense when applied by brush compared to the airbrush, so this will be visible even on the part sprayed with the same color, but it will show up really nicely on all the other colors. And this guy has more edges than the average Redditor, but ideally I will hit every single one of them with this. The only exception is the right back side of the model, which according to my logic is fully in the shadows. The edges here will get a highlight with some red paint that I had on my wet palette. I think it was burnt red from AK Interactive. And this is where I have to pay the price for spraying on the base coat and the highlights for the armor panels. If you paint them by hand and into a single color, it is easy to use the same color to correct any mistakes you make with the edge highlights. But since in this case the whole panel is one big color transition, it's extremely difficult to color match the exact spot for any corrections. So ideally don't make too many mistakes. That means going slowly and deliberately, not taking any shortcuts and moving the model around constantly to get the best possible angle at an edge. The more you can use the side of the brush, the better. Fortunately for us, the details are sculpted on so well on this model that hitting the edges is a breeze, so it really is just a matter of time and patience. I still messed up quite a bit since I generally like both of those, but the end result still looks quite good, I would say. The next color I used was Light Rust from AK Interactive, a nice vibrant orange color that is still brighter than anything else on the armor so far, so while the previous orange was quite subtle in some places, this guy will show up quite strongly on the edges. That is why I will use it much more strategically, only in the highlighted areas on all the edges that are facing up and towards the light. Once I am done with this, I will switch to my final color, Dirty Yellow from AK Interactive. This one is technically a yellow, but still on the orange side, but it will stand out quite dramatically among the oranges, so I will use this really only on the most prominent edges and corners in the light areas. And that's the orange armor done, but there is plenty more edges to highlight, so let's move on to the rest. Fortunately, there are not too many white parts, with the head being the most prominent one. First, I used some ivory to highlight every single edge. Then I came in with some pure white, focusing on only the most prominent edges. All the black parts are almost as big with nearly as many edges as the orange. First, I used anthracite gray to highlight every single edge. Then I switched to grey-blue and highlighted only the edges that are facing up or to the right, towards the light. Finally, I used snow blue on the most prominent edges and corners in the light areas. The nice thing about highlighting the black parts is that it's super easy to correct mistakes, since I can simply come in with the original black and paint over anything without having to worry about color matching that particular spot. As I mentioned before, I'm not a huge fan of painting and highlighting through metal, so I went with a pretty simple approach here. I highlighted most of the surface with the original gun metal, leaving some of the gnawing oil shaded parts visible in the shadows. And then I used aluminum from AK Interactive to edge highlight all the edges that should be glinting in the light. For the gold bits, I did the same with Necro Gold for bringing back the original color and Peridot Alchemy for the edge highlights. Now there was only the fun stuff left to do, like painting the lenses, some glow effects and finishing the base. 
I decided to paint a lens on his mechanical eye thingy. The head needed a bit of color and I thought giving him an eye would give him some character. Lenses are actually quite surprisingly easy to paint. You simply need a black base first, then you determine where the light comes from. And we already know it's from the top and the right on this model. Now we need to paint a small color patch on top of the lens in the direction on the top. Then at the bottom of the lens in the opposite direction, so bottom left in this case, we need to paint a much bigger spot of color following the contour of the lens. I did these with ocean blue. Then you do the same thing but with a brighter color, in this case blue-green and inside the previous patches of color. Finally repeat again with something that is the same color but so bright that it's almost white, like pastel blue. Then add a couple of coats of gloss varnish over the whole thing to bring it together and you end up with a pretty cool looking lens. The glow effect is similarly easy. First all you need to do is to choose a color that goes well with your color scheme. In my case I went with this blue since it synergizes well with both the violet tones of the shadows and the base as well as the orange tones of the armor. Now we need the color to be intense so we need to paint it over a white base. So I took some pure white and dropped it into the vents of the guns. I used multiple coats of this to achieve full coverage. Then I took the same blue green I used for the eye as well and sprayed it over the whole area making sure that I hit not only the white recesses but also the area around them as well, making it look like there is light coming from that source. Finally I used pastel blue to highlight all the edges around the lights to make it look like the same light is reflecting on them. Quite simple but effective I think. Now all I had to do was to finish the base. I dry brushed some blue violet over the whole surface to give it more highlights on top of what I got from the contrast paint. Then I added some alien looking plants and lots of bluish violet tufts and called it a day. And the end result looks like this. Thank you so much for watching and if you made it this far I assume that you enjoyed the video so maybe give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next one.